So, so I'll do question three. I won't do question two, unless there are people actually requesting that question. So, um, so this is question three. And <laughs> um, uh, from the fact that it's talking about telescope, I already have a sense this is going to be about Rayleigh criteria. So <laughs> from that, let me get started here. It says uh, some diameter Arecibo radio telescope. Oh, and it's a circular looking thing. So even though this is a very unusual setup, um, we can think of this as being the circular aperture of telescope. You know, it's not dealing with the visible light. It's uh, dealing with um, it's dealing with the radio wavelength, and it's huge. <laughs> it's not um, anything like you normally think of as aperture. But this is our aperture of the the optical device, optical like device that uh, we are dealing with. So it has uh, detected radio waves with some wavelength lambda in average wavelength. So it asks, what is the angle between two just resolvable point sources for this telescope? And for the criterion of this just resolvable, um, we, we have a criteria that's uh, described in the text of it. We call it a uh, Rayleigh criterion. And I do want to say it's, uh, um, it is a bit arbitrary in the sense that if something is at a smaller distance than radio, Rayleigh criterion, it doesn't suddenly make it unresolvable. It, it's a whole continuum, you know? And when something is just to be on the Rayleigh criterion, it doesn't make them clearly resolvable. It's not a sharp dividing line. It's just um, it's just uh, somewhat arbitrary but reasonable criterion that people came up with, where Rayleigh criterion is the situation where the diffraction limited resolution of one source is just uh, um, so um, this is the sort the light the uh, diffraction pattern of one source. Then at the first diffraction minimum is the the central maximum of the second source. That's the criterion where um, it's we say they are barely resolvable. And uh, your textbook gives uh, the um, the equation for this criterion. Um, it uh, as compared to and in the lecture, I go over the single slit situation. In the single slit situation, you can kind of think of this as a single slit diffraction and work through that. With the circular apertures, this is that's why I was uh, emphasizing that this is a circular. With the circular apertures, um, there's a factor that comes in. There's a factor of 1.22 that comes in, and I always forget the location where the, <laughs> the vector goes. So let me just to try to first to write out most of the criterion first. So Rayleigh criterion looks at what is the smallest angular difference that you can resolve. And it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be uh, proportional to the wavelength so that the shorter the wavelength, the smaller, um, smaller angular difference you can result because the shorter wavelength leads to less diffraction and it's going to be divided by the aperture size. The larger aperture size means higher resolving power or smaller delta theta resolvable. And I think the factor of 1.22 comes on the numerator. So I think. <laughs> um, so this is really criteria and it's a uh, um, so I, I think you can understand the reasoning for it. And at the end of the day, it's a, a criteria just to, to remember, memorize, where know where to look up. So in terms of um, getting the answer here, the minimum resolvable angle, you are looking for answer in micro radians. So really all you have to do is work out 1.22 times the wavelength divided by the the, 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 the the aperture. And uh, let me, in this case, let me actually plug in the numbers. I, I don't normally do it, but this is one of those circumstances where number is more meaningful than just uh, 
seeing the formula 1.22 times and let me do it this way i'm gonna make sure i plug in wavelength and aperture in the same units that will make sure the unit of meters cancels out and or unit of length cancels out and uh, my answer will be in the unit of radians and i just had to convert it to micro radians so 1.22 times let me plug in wavelength in meters so that's a 0 0.08 meter divided by 305 meters for the diameter or that's our A, 305. So um, that in radians, to convert radians to micro radians, you multiply by 10 to the power of six because the one radian is 10 to the six micro radians. So yeah, 320 micro radians. No, that's it. And I guess as long as I worked out the answer, I can plug it into. One thing I am curious about is um, how much uh, tolerance I put on this question. Let me see if uh, I put on more than usual tolerance. Uh, no, I didn't. So I do expect you to use the uh, the Rayleigh criterion formula. If you miss the factor of 1.22, you'll get it wrong. Um, okay, so that's part A. Let me do part B. It's to asking how close together could these point sources be at the, some distance away? Uh, let me label this D of the Andromeda galaxy. Note estimated the radius of the, oh, oh I, I don't think this is something that I need. Um, it, this information is given just for comparison purposes. Um, so the two point sources can be as close as blank, uh, 10 to the 15 kilometer for minimum resolvable distance. Okay, so this is where I think it might be useful to kind of draw a picture. So let's say we are on Earth here and we are looking at, um, an astronomical object that's a far away. So let's say an Andromeda galaxy, we are here. And what the question is asking you to consider are the two point sources, or at least uh, things that you would consider as point sources within Andromeda galaxy, separated at some distance, uh, I guess, small d away. So these two are separated at some distance, small d away. And because it's giving us the distance to the Andromeda galaxy, what it's telling us is the distance from Earth to wherever the deep space object is at. So, so if, if you draw this auxiliary figure, you can see how the information that we have so far can be used to answer this question. So I'm just drawing a line of sight to one of the objects, and I'm drawing the exaggerated line of sight. Let me <laughs> try to not bend it so much. I know it's eventually gonna end up bending, but <laughs> so it looks not quite as bad. So here's the line of sight to the other object. And these two objects are as some angular separation, delta theta. Um, as we look at it. And what we answered in part A is delta theta. This gives us the angular separation delta theta that we can resolve. And all we have to do now is relate this uh, angular separation to the, to the um, distance to the object and the separation between the objects. And the simplification that makes things easy for us is to think about this distance D as an arc length of this giant circle of radius d. And it's not an exact thing, but in the limit where this separation is small, approximating this uh, distance d as an arc length um, actually works pretty reasonably. Then, um, <laughs> then if you remember the definition of radian and how radian is defined in terms of the radius and arc length, you can write down this expression, that this angular separation is the arc length, small d, 
divided by the radius, which is the distance from Earth to Andromeda galaxy, capital D. So that's it. That's the relationship. And um, all you have to do is solve for the quantity that we want, D. So that separ minimum separation that we can resolve using this radio telescope is the capital D, the distance to the Andromeda galaxy, times the angular separation. And um, uh, since I've spent enough time on this question, let me just uh, do this in Ofram Alpha so that I don't have to do any unit conversion. <laughs> um, so let me just uh, finish it up here. Um, it's, I guess uh, because we don't have uh, in-person um, So Ulfram, use of Ulfram Alpha is something that is allowed even during timed assessment. Um, so anyways, uh, but let me plug 2.57 million light year. That's the distance D times. And we had the, the angular separation, uh, 320 e to the minus six radian. Radian isn't real unit, but it's fine. You can have it that way. So that's the calculation. And I want that in, um, oh, I wonder if I can do this, 10 to the 15 kilometers. I could also just ask for it in kilometers, but, oh yeah. It, I think it understood the radian to be, yeah, sorry, it uh, oh, actually, it misunderstood my input. Uh, it got in as inches. So let me just do it this way. Um, with the parentheses, it might understand that I, nope. All right, just in kilometers. <laughs> Convert, yeah, that times that to kilometers. You know, I guess uh, putting that radian there, it really throws it off. Radian is a real unit anyway. So I um, think, yeah, not having this actually helps it um, do it correctly. So it's still not <laughs> kind of giving me what I want, but I can work with it here. It says 7.781 times 10 to the 18 meters. I want it in 10 to the 15 kilometers and actually 10 to the 15 kilometers is 10 to the 18 meters. So I just don't need 7.781 here. All right, we'll be done there. So yeah, that's it. Um, you know, it's a um, rel relatively easy geometry, but uh, I do find it that a lot of people forget um, what they learned about radians. And um, that's uh, where drawing a figure like this helps um, because if you are looking for uh, formulas to uh, then it's, you, frankly, I'm gonna find the formulas, but um, it, you know this is why you take these classes. <laughs> if there were formulas for every situation, then <laughs> they uh, they wouldn't need you. They could just put uh, numbers into uh, a calculator and be done. But they need uh, um, intelligent human beings to actually interpret the situation, set up um, the things you need to actually solve it.